entities has data on them. Um, and, and those columns are basically the, um, the components that, that each of these entities has. Um, this columnar storage allows us to access this data very efficiently. Um, we'll, we'll get great memory caching performance and so on. Um, the S in this is the most interesting, in my opinion, uh, there's, there's systems. Um, systems, basically, they've got every frame. They're like scheduled tasks that do work by fetching data from the entities. From the entities. Um, so you can see over on the right a really simple, a real, a real snippet of, how, of what Bevy looks like. Um, it does really fascinating things with the type system. Um, you, have, uh, you just have in within your main function, you have the builder pattern to add some plugins, which say, Okay, this is how um, uh, these are some default behaviors that we want to enable, and then we just call a regular function and say, okay, add this as a system to our scheduler, and then it runs it once every frame until the end of time. Um, and then you can see in in there, logic is nice, uh, nice and simple. In this case, we're just updating uh, updating the position based on the velocity, nice and uh, nice and easy. So. In this talk, I want to talk about um, a feature that I made for uh, well, help make at least uh, for Bevy 0.5, our latest release. Um, it's called Reliable Change Detection. So, to get into this, we can talk a little bit about what the heck is change detection and why do we care. So, the underlying model here is that we have we have these queries within our systems. Um, you can see it over on the right. Uh, that fetch specific entities and and grab all the entities that have the right uh, the right components. Um, and uh, this is great. You have nice, like, blocky, blocky data access, uh, access um, nice and fast. But sometimes you don't want to like operate on every single possible entity, possible relevant entity, every single time. Um, this ends up causing some. Uh, this ends up wasting your time, and it can cause you to repeat work that you would rather only do exactly once. Um, so for this, we have. A, the, this wonderful concept called query filters, which it filters your queries. If, if you know SQL, you, you know what a query filter does. Um, and in this case, one of our most important filters is um, on changed. And this will filter entities who have had that specific component changed. Um, and it specifically had the specifically component changed recently. But recently is kind of where the trouble starts. So the basic algorithm uh, that we had before is pretty straightforward. We have um, each of our pieces of data, uh, they store a flag uh, to, uh, to mark whether it's changed or not. Um, we flip this flag when we, when we call DUF mute on our components, um, on our components or other pieces of data. We, it's really cool. It, uh, rather than actually like comparing the data and saying, oh, well, is this different than it was before? We just say, OK, well, in order to change something, you probably have to de mutably dereference it. And so you could say, OK, great, there's, a, there's our change detection. And it just automatically happens and nobody ever needs to think about it. Um, and then at the end of the frame, we just reset all of the changes that have occurred. Because then we say, OK, this hasn't changed recently. So nice and straightforward, very easy to program, very easy to think about. Um, it seems like that should basically work, right? But there are some problems with this. Um, the most important problem that it has is that, so to refresh, you're running these systems in order, <laughs> um, operating in, in them uh, uh, across the frame. And you have, uh, and so you can have a system that, uh, that creates a change first and a system that, that detects the change second. And if you have them in that order, it'll work fine because you'll create a change, the change will be, uh, bit will be flipped, they'll detect the change, they'll respond to it, bit will flip back. But if you swap the order, it won't work. And so you need to be really thoughtful about what, do you, what order your systems are running in. And it's not just a local property, it ends up being global. And if you get enough of this, if you, if you get enough of these change detecting and change creating systems operating together, you can actually end up with a circular dependency where you'll have system A that creates changes these by system B and so on. And then it ends up such that there is actually no correct order that allows you to, to use the change detection system to actually do what you want. Um, and so that kind of ends up with a bit of a problem. The, other, the next problem that it has is that if we skip a system for a frame, say we're only running it once every five frames, or we pause the game, all the changes will just be lost forever. And there's nothing we can do, because it'll just be reset, and you won't be able to see it. Um, if you're running a, a systems, a systems multiple times per frame, say you're trying to, to process input faster, um, those will also say, oh, yeah, you, I've noticed that you've uh, changed which buttons you're pressing uh, 15 times, and then it'll fire off. Uh, it'll do the work 15 times, and it, it, again, it won't work. Um, all of this 
it really became a lot worse uh, with the scheduler changes that we had in place for 0.5. Um, Radis was is our scheduler uh, mastermind and it has done fantastic work. And he, he he's made the schedule even more do, automatically parallel. Um, systems uh, systems will, as long as they are not accessing the same data mutably, run in parallel with each other automatically. This is great, except then uh, this whole system ordering mattering mix becomes so much more important, um, and you'll end up uh, and you'll end up with uh, with non-deterministic messes in your code just breaking all over the place. So this is a bad thing. Um, we had some pretty gnarly design criteria that we had to that we had, had to cope with when trying to figure out. Okay, we want a new solution. What can it do? And the gist of it is that it needs to be ergonomic. Uh, so it can't be any like more onerous to use than what we've previously done, where you just stick it, uh, stick a, a parameter in, into your filter and then stick that into a system. Um, it needs to be fast and it needs to be perfectly reliable. It should never have any false negatives. It should never have any false, uh, false positives and it should work immediately. So if we skip our system for 500 frames, we should be able to say, okay, uh, we, we, something has changed since last I saw this data. Um, if we run five, uh, a system five times per frame, it should detect uh, detect only those changes on, on each pass, and it should work immediately. We can't we can't say, oh yeah, what changed last frame? Because then you you get these systems stacked up on top of each other, and these delays just propagate onwards, and it, and it ends up leading to really nasty problems of like, okay, I don't want to use this system. I don't want to use this too aggressively. I can't make sure I have to make sure I don't have the too long of chains and so on. So so it's nasty. Um, there's a lot of problems. Solving that was an exciting problem, but I don't have time for that. So I'm going to jump straight to our solution. So the solution here is honestly fairly straightforward once you see it, but getting to there is challenging. The way this works is that we have three timers. Each of them is just a simple U32, and we store them in three different places. And the first is we have the world's timer, which is basically just an indicator of the current time. Whenever the whenever a system is run, this timer advances. Next, we have a timer on each individual piece of data, so in this case, the components, that, um, that notes when was the last time our, this component was changed. And finally, we have a timer on each of our systems that says, when was this system last run? And taking this together, we can actually say, OK, has this, so you can see in that third function there, if the system timer is, is less than or equal to the component timer, this is, uh, something has changed since I last saw it. And then that's it. Uh, but the magic is in getting this, uh, is in getting this fast and getting it efficient, where we have one U32 to each, and then one U32 on each of the pieces of component data. And then, um, and as you can see, we're updating the system timer and the, uh, and the component timers um, appropriately. But one of the really cool things that we do is this never breaks. We never like run out of time and our U32, oh, it's okay, yeah, this this system has been run, this game has been running for um, for three days and, and now everything just crashes and can never be run. It's, we we, may, uh, we loop around. We reuse this by saying, by creating a ring buffer by using uh, wrap subtraction. subtraction. Um, so basically, if you think of it, you can think of it like a clock, where on the you know that the difference in time from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is only two hours, even though uh, rather than 22 hours, because uh, because it's the lesser of those two. Um, so yeah, that's our that's our solution, and like I said, it works fantastically. It's users say. Okay, I want to. Uh, I want the system to detect every change exactly once, no matter what. And that's the entire mental model. And it, it's fast, and it's automatic, and it just works. Uh, thank you guys so much. That was a lot of fun. And thank you so much to all of my team who who helped us helped us build this. Davier did almost all of this implementation work. Kurt is our um, benevolent dictator for the, for now. And uh, he would. He's done a fantastic job leading this project, and Bjorn and Jamadazi um, really helped come up with this, uh, with the heart of this algorithm. And this was far, far, far too long of a project. Um, I have a, a blog post on this coming out. If you want to read a draft blog post, you can check out the pull request, um, and it gets into all of the gory details and the five solutions we rejected. Thank you guys so much.
Thank you, Alice. Um, so we have uh, four and a half minutes left for a few questions. We prefer if you write a question into the chat. And while I read your question, I will unmute you as well in case you want to clarify something. Um, any questions? If it's just a system timer less than or equal to component timer, don't you still have an edge case close to the limit? Yeah. So Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. This was me being uh, this was me being sloppy with uh, uh with it. Uh, there's the that's what the wing buffer is for. That's for it, it's to handle that looping correctly. Um, I decided to go with a very simplified pseudocode in order to get the point across. Then uh, Parker's curious about uh, why a U32 versus a U16. Um. This was mostly a matter of we don't really need the performance, and it, um, you end up actually caring about how long the maximum time between it is. So, with aggressive estimates, you, we can we can skip systems for about fifteen hours um, at sixty frames per second, and um, sixty frames per second, and a thousand systems per per frame, which is like extremely aggressive. But it's about fifteen, sixteen hours, um, and. As a result, this actually kind of matters because if you're using this for pause functionality, you may actually just pause your game in Factorio, or walk away for or walk away for a day, and say, "Okay, great. I hope nothing broke." And the longer we can push this up, the better it is. And if we find that that extra memory cost is is painful, we can we can bump down, or more likely, we can allow end users to configure it. But for now, it's okay. It's we we don't care about the performance. Why why prematurely optimize now? And you're are you talking about memory performance? Yeah, memory performance because gotcha. each because you'll have one of these uh, you'll have one of these timers stored with every single piece of component data that you have in order to independently track how long it's been been changed. So it is uh, so it, it does have overhead, but compared to uh, compared to all of the other um, all of the other solutions, it's very good and it enables so much functionality. So one of the things that I really think is important when thinking about features like this is the idea that you can't just benchmark this stuff in a vacuum. It's you can't just say, oh yeah, well this uh, this increases our system iteration time by by ten percent, therefore it's completely unacceptable. Because in real games, what you're actually using this feature for, one of its most important things, is to save work and to avoid repeating work. And not only do you get the benefits of faster development time by having these ultra powerful attractions, you actually have you you're free to use uh, these uh, these performance optimization tricks where it otherwise wouldn't be safe or reasonable to do so. We have one uh, question from Discord as well. The mm -hmm. is it tracked with all component data or just where query has a changed? So task? right now, uh, right now it's uh, tracked on everything. The reason for that is that we'd have to specialize our DOF mute uh, implementation, and uh, like we could go in and we could do uh, we could. Um, and analyze the schedule and see, okay, which one has changed or so on. But then we would end up having to, to split that um, and then and it makes it more challenging to implement dynamic systems, for example, in the future. And this is an optimization that is worth discussing. And in, in your application, it may very well be worth doing it, but it wasn't worth it for us, at least right now. Mm. Yes. Any other questions? Of course, uh, for everyone here in the Zoom, we will at the end be grouped into one big breakout room that won't be recorded, and you can ask further in-depth questions to Alice and other speakers. Yep. Um, so, thank you so much, Alice. Yep. Thanks for, for having me. That was talk. fun. And uh, I hope we get to see your uh, blog post shared in the Discord and for future talks on Bevy. Absolutely.